Thank you. Next council member. We'll now hear from council member Kalos followed by council member Gredenchik. Starting time. Thank you to Chairs Drummond Traeger for your leadership and to Chancellor Carranza, DOE teachers and staff for adapting to the pandemic and to more than 60 that lost their lives. Today, I'm concerned with proposed cuts that will only drive costs, like skipping an oil change only to replace a more costly engine. The number of questions in only five minutes, so please, if you can, spend no more than 30 seconds answering each question. As one of two parents, both of whom are working more than full time, we feel the stress of balancing work with child care. We won't be able to return to normal without access to child care. Wouldn't you agree that scaling back the role at a 3K for all to school districts in Manhattan throughout the city will reduce access for families to employees, employment and put children who have fallen behind because of the pandemic even further behind? We are in a global pandemic and an economic pandemic. I'm, I'm always willing to listen to other ideas. Um, these are hard cuts for everyone. And unfortunately, they're reaching even the most fundamental uh, programs that we believe in like 3K. We're not cutting 3K, we're just not expanding. We're pausing on the expansion. Similarly, Mayor de Blasio is proposing cuts to SYP and you're proposing cuts to Sonic After School. What will children do between 3 p.m. and 6 p.m. while parents are working or traveling home? Uh, again, this is about access to economic opportunity and getting people back to work. Yeah, so again, we're working with our city partner and some of those programs are in different agencies around developing alternatives. Uh, we are also engaging the philanthropic community uh, and seeing if they can be of assistance during this time of need for the children of New York City. I appreciate that we're doing the quick back and forth and respecting the time. Uh, I, I would just say that this is my tax dollars, our tax dollars, and we should be paying for the programs versus turning to philanthropy. I welcome the philanthropy but uh, we should pay for it. DOE has a multi-billion dollar contracts budget. I'm the contracts chair. Uh, both our finance chair and education chair brought up a number of the different contracts. Is there an opportunity to first cut all of our contracts, multiple billions of dollars? I know we're looking for hundreds of billions of dollars, but could we stop spending externally before we start cutting internally? Uh, sir, so I think it's, it's important uh, to note that uh, contracts are not bad in and of themselves, that you have to have contracted services to serve students in some regards. Uh, so without specificity of what contract and what it's serving and what, what that impact would be on students, uh, it's kind of hard to answer your question. I'd like to ask my ch chief financial officer if she could also expand a little bit on that. Lindsay? Thank you, sir. Um, thank you, Councilmember Kalos. So just as a reminder, some of the things that we do spend our, our contract budget on include our community schools program, nursing, um, custodial supplies, nursing supplies, food, transportation, um, you know, related services for our students. Those are all things I think that are critical to running our school system. Um, IT obviously is a big area that we spend money on, as you're well aware, but that is supporting our critical response right now. Remote learning is critically supported by all of that. Um, we are looking at reducing contractual spend. That's part of the existing executive budget. We are always looking at more, but there are critical services that are provided by our contractors. Would you be open to sharing the contracts that you're considering canceling or not moving forward with in order to save money, as well as the contracts that are under consideration but you chose not to move forward with so that we can work with you to evaluate? We can absolutely get back to you with more information. Perfect. Uh, and let's just jump into the technology. So I guess big question right off the top is Chancellor Carranza, will skills, schools open in September? Yes, no, or planning for the best but ready for the worst? Yeah, uh, none of us have a crystal ball, so we don't know how this uh, virus is going to continue to metastasize uh, out, out in the community. We are shooting for a September opening. That is our goal. That's what we're preparing for. But we're also preparing for any other eventuality. Again, we're going to be guided um, in those decisions by what the medical professionals tell us and what's safe and secure for students, staff and community members. Thank you. And so I'm going to do my best to finish in 30 seconds, but I just diving into the technology, Chair Drum's gone and 
to the DOE's $231 million spend on 300,000 iPads at a cost of $770 each, which is almost twice retail. We're now on the hook for $36 million a year just for the internet. And this isn't fast internet, this isn't broadband, and none of these devices have keyboards. Do you believe that having kids on slower speeds without keyboards is equitable? And would DOE consider I'm saving a quarter of a billion dollars by distributing $100 or $200 laptops and working with Spectrum or Altice to deploy free broadband to all students, giving every student a laptop and uh, using the free service during the pandemic and then Internet Essentials, which I negotiated with Attorney General James, to continue at $14.99 a month and a huge cost savings over the emergency procurement. Thank you. Thank you. So, Council Member uh, Kalo, so, um, I disagree with the premise of your question, um, and very respectfully. Uh, when we transitioned and pivoted to remote learning, there was an immense digital divide. We'd never, we, we did not have the time for a year-long procurement process. Uh, we had to work with uh, entities that could provide us the devices in real time, uh, and we found people that would provide us with those devices. I mentioned earlier, we've, we've delivered over 280,000 devices to children that didn't have those devices. Now, those devices are equipped with, those iPads are equipped with uh, internet capability. So there's a chip that's installed that gives them internet capability. They have a hard case and we also purchased insurance for each one of those devices. We think that's important from an equity perspective because we did not want any student or any family to not uh, ask for a device on the fear that something, if something happened to that device that they would uh, somehow be held responsible for that device. Uh, again, in real time uh, addressing this crisis, uh, I am proud of the work that this organization has done to get devices into the hands of our students and, and our most vulnerable students. But as always, and again, I really appreciate your thoughts because we want to continue to improve how we're serving our students and what that looks like. So happy to partner with you on additional partnerships and what this looks like as we continue to uh, move into the next uh, chapter of this school year. Thank you. Thank you.